Mm. Are we? Have you checked the mics? Are we good? Yeah, no, we're good. Okay. I say we're good. Talk. Like, really talk. Talk in the mic. All right, so I, yeah, was, no, um, I was thinking about the show from the 80s uh, that I really dug. The Smurfs. No, no, no. It was about, like, uh, there's Alf. all these machines living together, right? Uh, mm. And one of them, like, kind of had a little attitude. One of them was tough. One of them was always, like... Uh, one of them was always like just having a hard time. Like, is this brave little toaster? No, the machine just wasn't having it. Was uh, you know, the, that machine just always had issues. And then like sometimes the machines would get like a paper jam, <laughs> or you try to send a document and you forgot to push one, and so there's a bunch of issues. And then like there was this like older machine that was kind of like in charge of them. What was the name of that show? I don't, I don't remember this. Man, I want to say maybe it was called the Facts of Life. (laughs) (laughs) Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. (laughs) The guy that's buying a lottery ticket every week has a plan for the time. (laughs) Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. I don't want that win. I want the last 10 minutes back. (laughs) Two guys, one podcast. I'm all about some fart filtering. Two guys, one podcast. She's wrong, but let's let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm sorry, what did you think it was? It's what I know it is. Okay. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Like it's like a it's like a might. joke. That's a that's a joke in a comic strip within the world of Dilbert. That's what that is. Yeah, I thought that might uh, tickle you. Uh, I like that one a lot. All right, welcome to Two Guys One Podcast. I'm one guy, and I'm hold on, and I'm the other. Before we get started, can we hit please have a word of the day? Yeah, we do. I do. Okay, okay. I, I have a word of the day. Right on. We only we skipped one week without a word of the day. I know, you but I didn't, know, I didn't know if we ran out of twenty slang or if we we're going to move to the fifties slang. No, we've got we've still we've still got lots of words left. Okay, right. We, on. There were like sixty words on the original list. We got a we got a ways to go, my friend. I tell you what, we're going to be what we're going to run out of sooner is uh, words from Bob Ross, and yeah. unfortunately. Bob Ross is no longer with us, so there'll be no new words from Bob. We'll find something else to put in that episode, something zen to end the show with. Uh, indeed, indeed. Uh, so, uh, But right now, uh, uh, welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. Uh, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. <laughs> and this is the podcast. You interrupted. We were, it, was, it was like coitus interruptus there. So I, I, it's one of my favorite bits, and I just <laughs> want to make sure that we got to it this week since we didn't last week. Fair enough. Uh, if this is your first show, welcome aboard, my friends. Uh, check out all the archives. Uh, get a, a better taste of who we are, and see um, you know an example of our regular segments all at twoguysonepod.com. dot com. You can also find links for our YouTube page, our Instagram page, our Facebook, our Twitter, on and on and on. We're all over the World Wide Web, even when we aren't in your ears with free funny every Sunday at twoguysonepod.com. dot com. Right now, our first segment. Is the word of the day even before the rundown? You're so anxious for the word of the day. You're just like, uh, no, we it, can do, do, it, put, hey, let's put do it in my ear hole. Let's do the rundown first. Right. I just wanted to make sure we had one before we moved forward, or I might just walk out. That's you. It's going to strike, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be one one guy, one podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's the rundown. One on one with that guy. <laughs> No, that guy's not even here. He's not. When are you getting back on the show? Uh, we're, we've got a word of the day. Uh, we've got a listener mail. We, oh, we've actually got a couple of listener right mails. Right on. Yeah. Thanks, we've, guys. We've got a breaking news. We've got an old news. Yeah, I'm always surprised when we get to the news sections because sometimes there are articles that I have sent you throughout the week. <laughs> But I've forgotten about them until we until you bring it up, and I'm like, oh, I love this article, or oh, I hate this article. It's like past other guys sending future other guy a present. Yeah, man. <laughs> through through Joel, uh, you know, we've done a couple of stories now in a row, uh, two a couple of shows in a row. We've had a story about um, you know the current movement across our country to legalize marijuana. Yes. I thought last week I referred to that as as talking high. We've got a talking high this week. It's a new segment, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I think we could. Uh, I think. I think 
that I'm cool with doing that segment, but I think we come up with a better name. Um, and talking high, yeah. Hey, let the listeners send in submissions for All right, what that fair, segment. Fair enough. Be. Two guys one pod at me dot com. Two guys one pod at me dot com. You can send us an email or uh, talk back to us on our Twitter account or our uh, Facebook page, facebook dot com slash two guys one pod or at two guys one pod on Twitter. Become part of the show. Indeed. Um, uh, we've got all of that, and then we'll wrap things up with a word from Bob Ross. Ooh, you forgot one. What? The triumphant return of the Man Scout badge. No, you've yeah, got a Man Scouting? I got one. My friends, it's a special day. It's a special day indeed. All right, so let's start things off then. Full show here for you. Word of the day. <laughs> Uh, in this segment, what we do is we bring back some 1920s slang. It's a word or a phrase popular in the 1920s out of the vernacular for a while. We're going to bring it back by using it first here on this show. The, the bit is the berries. And if you don't think so, you can ankle yourself over here. And if you're a nice bit of calico, I won't take it out on you too hard. But if he ends up crying, he'll just uh, get himself to sleep with a little giggle water tonight. I'll take some giggle water. That's true. And um, and then I'll make a big story of it. And you can tell me, go tell it to Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all of them. Uh, all right. This week's word of the day. Know your onions. Know your onions? Yeah. You got to know your onions, other guy. That's when I don't you... have a... Well, hold on. Let me Let me... Is it something about layers? No. <laughs> no. Is it something it's, about being stinky? This isn't a Shrek joke. No. Is it a ball joke? No. <laughs> really? No. I don't know. Maybe onion meant something. Ba- onion has to mean it's, something back it's in just, the 20s. It's just to know what's up or what's going on. To, to know the word on the street, to know to have your finger on the pulse, that's to know your onions. He really knows his onions. Is this is this the genesis? Is this where where the onion came from the Onion Network. Is that is that where it got its uh, name from? From the 1920 slang? I d- I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like it did. That sounds like it has, man. Uh, possibly, possibly. We'll try to use that like it's somewhere. A cheeky, it's a cheeky. Uh, it's a cheeky way to use that 1920 slang because to know your onions is to actually know what's up. But the Onion Network is like, hey, it's kind of what's up, but it's a lot of fake shit that's funny. So if you if you get the gag, then you know your onions, right? Perhaps. All right, we'll if try to not, use that somewhere not, in the show. If not, it should be, and that can become part of the lore. I like it. We'll add it to it. I'll see, we should send that in. You're welcome, Onion. Uh, speaking of what's going on, it's time to make our announcement, sir. Oh, we're going to do it now? Yeah. Uh, right. This week, uh, the blog post goes out. So if you're listening to this, you'll actually know this before, but there's going to be a public post, and we're going to start making some some publicity about it and start making a little push to get people excited about it. Um, we're about to launch a new show. Uh, it'll be available on Wednesday, May 7th. Pod on Pod is the name of it. Unlike this show, it's going to be clean, first of all. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, so no dirty words. Uh, your mom, Zoinks! Yeah, your mom can listen to this one, even. Um, and more importantly, my mom can listen to this one. Um, uh, so uh, Pod on Pod, the idea is to do a guide to the world of podcasts. We love podcasts. We both listen to a ton of them. We like making this one. It's a great medium. It really, really is. And we think it's on the verge of exploding. So for all the newbies, we want to make sure that they don't just get the you know the couple of podcasts at the top of the charts or just whatever their friends are listening to. We want to make sure that they understand there's something out there for everybody. So every week, we're going to bring you a new show and review that show for you uh, through four uh, pieces of criteria. Audio quality, host likability, production values, and then the content itself. We'll talk about all of those things, break it down for you, give you um, you know, a little flavor of what the show is going to be like week to week, and then we'll rate it overall so that you got a real easy idea of whether that's the kind of show for you or not. And we're, we're running the gamut. We're hitting sports, news, info, comedy. We're, we're doing them all. Yeah, it, it, so in fact, if you've got a podcast that you would like us to review uh, or something you've heard about and you're like, yeah, I keep my friends keep telling me I'd like to get into that, but I haven't, let us review it. and We'll save you the time if it's not any good. Uh, you can send those to podonpod at iCloud.com uh, or just um, stay tuned. We'll have more info for you as well as links on our website at twoguysonepod.com. But coming the 7th of May, it's Pod on Pod, a guide to the world of podcasts. Podcast because it's not your daddy's radio. It's exciting, man. It's exciting. It is. It's very exciting. A, a, a burgeoning podcast network on the way. Well, it's it's a great first place reference place. It's the it's the it's the card catalog, if you will, of the of the 
uh, Potiverse is what it's going to be. Yes, that's it. We're the Dewey Decimal System of podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I And I should say here, um, we couldn't have done this uh, without a little bit of help from our friends at teamprocreate.com. You should really check these guys out. They are a community of creative artists. Uh, it's all about plugging people together. If you've got a project, a script that's laying out there that needs to be produced, they've got directors and actors looking to make something. If you're an actor or a director looking for something to be in, they've got uh, screenwriters that are looking to help you showcase your talents. All of those things can happen at teamprocreate.com, uh, and they've got a whole network of podcasts coming, uh, the Procast Network, and Pod on Pod's going to be at the forefront of that. And, Robin, those guys have been easy to work with, fantastic to work with. Uh, you know, we wanted help with some, uh, some creative logos for the show. Uh, bam, we've got several to pick from now. Yeah, a lot of lot of cool stuff coming, and you're going to see some of that soon. Uh, but also, uh, they've been helping us with music, actually. A couple of weeks ago, well, no, last week, as a matter of fact, we had a new band, The Lost Ambitions, uh, and uh, Rob was responsible for hooking us up with that. Uh, this week on the podcast, uh, I think we're going to have another band uh, provided by um, Rob and the team at Team Procreate. Uh, it's Corona is going to be the name of that band, actually. The song's Future. These guys are from Canada, by the way. Winnipeg, Canada. My favorite uh, place for uh, musicians. It's a it's a north of the border band with a south of the border name. What's that all about? <laughs> um, People show up expecting a Cinco de Mayo party, and they're like, "Sorry, it's not going to happen." That's, I, I mentioned uh, the band that we used last week. Um, you made fun of them. The song was "And So." You said, "Yeah, they lost their ambition so much that they stopped writing the title." <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got some listener mail. Oh. Jamail. Jamail is here. Ooh. Yeah. From the Lost Ambitions. Right on, man. Yeah. Subject line. Thanks. Thanks for the play, fellas. Mighty kind of you. Great show, by the way. We love Bob Ross. I thought you'd appreciate this. Next I love line. Bob Ross, man. We do, too. We're big fans of Bob. Uh, they said, feel free to use us like a Thai lady boy anytime you like. <laughs> Just give us a heads up. <laughs> I linked the episode in your website on our links page. Merci beaucoup, R. That's from The Lost Ambitions. Appreciate you guys, and the music's great. We will. We'll use another uh, another song soon, I'm sure. Um, you can check them out. We'll have some links for them on our website, twoguysonepod.com. Uh, we got some other listener mail. Uh, this one, I didn't have a name actually attached to it. I just got a link sent in. You were complaining recently. I think this is a few Uh-oh. episodes back. But we were discussing the fact that in the modern era, the internet, smartphones in particular, have allowed us to be ever available. Yeah. You were specifically pissed off because it had interrupted your mowing time. Oh. You remember I've, this? Uh, you know what? I've. Um, so you might not believe this, but I used to run like the wind blows. <laughs> um, haven't, haven't, haven't done it for years. And uh, I need you I, some I, magic legs. I started, uh, <laughs> I started, uh, started running again. But the but the aggravating thing is, while I'm running, I'd be listening to a podcast or listen to Pandora, or whatever I was listening to. But in a 30 minute run, I was constantly getting phone calls, which was just aggravating. So I'm, I've gotten better from disconnecting myself from my phone. I put it on silent. I turn it off. Whatever it is can wait. Uh, and I'm feeling much happier. It could be the working out, or it could be just that that 30 minutes a day to where I'm not having that anxiety from who the fuck is calling me. What the fuck do I have to do now? What is so goddamn important? Like I just hate being I hate being that connected to somebody. Uh, well, I think the the French have an idea on how to fix this problem for everybody. When the French clock off at 6 p.m. They really mean it. That's the headline. This is coming from TheGuardian.com. A new labor agreement in France means that employees must ignore their boss's work emails once they are out of the office and relaxing at home, even on their smartphones. Just in case you weren't jealous enough of the French already, what with their effortless uh, effortless style, lovely accents, and collective will to calorie control, I don't um, agree with with any, any of this. this. Any of that? You don't think the you don't like the accent? You don't you don't think French is kind of sexy? No, I think it's pretentious, and they sound like fucking dicks. <laughs> now, granted, I understand. I sound like an ignorant, backwitted fucking bumpkin. 
I completely understand that. So, uh, sure, I'm judging a book by its cover. After noticing the ability of bosses to invade their employees' home lives via smartphone at any hour of the day or night, uh, and that that was enabling real work hours to extend further and further beyond the 35-hour week the country famously introduced in 99, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, they don't work a 40-hour week. They definitely don't work a fucking 60-hour week like some of us do. They work a 35-hour week. That's, hey, cool. That's mandated. This, uh, I'm sure most listeners would think that I would hate this article and I would make fun of the French for it. But kudos to them, man. Yeah, well, I mean, they've put it into the law. When you've, when, you've, when you've resigned yourself to not being a world leader anymore, <laughs> you can go take a fucking nap. <laughs> Just take the whole month of July yeah. off if you want. Just yeah. go ahead. You're, you're never, you, you, that country is putting its people... And the, and the people, I'm sure, are allowing it to happen into a fucking box, into a rut that they're never going to better their situation because of. Fucking ever. <laughs> so, hey, garçon, Pierre, <laughs> s- s- sit there, drink your fucking wine, eat your goddamn cheese. Get, uh, get and used to bringing goods. us those baguettes. Yeah, and baked goods. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to continue working my ass off to better my situation, and that's just the way it's going to be. Like, we're an industrious country. So, so it's not that you love that they're taking time off. It's not that the, that you love the relaxation. It's that you love that somebody got out of the race. Yeah, it makes it easier for us. <laughs> it makes it easier for us. Under the deal, which affects around 250,000 employees in the technology and consultancy and, sectors. Oh, before, let me. I'm not. I've, you've no, got me on a on, on a rant now. That's okay. Uh, it's we, so we've both we've both we've traveled, and sure. sh- I I I can completely understand how other countries and other people can can look down their noses at us and and think that maybe sometimes we do terrible terrible things. Well, for those people out there, for those countries who may have that stigma of Americans and think that we're assholes, maybe we're assholes because we're working sixty and seventy hours a goddamn week, some weeks not even getting a day off. Uh, so we're gonna come. We're we're gonna be a little ornery. We're gonna be a little uh, a little tense. We're gonna we're gonna, we're not gonna be able to relax. So sorry. Um, so two hundred and fifty thousand employees in the technology and consultancy sectors of the French um, market are included in this. That includes the French arms of Google, Facebook. Uh, and PwC. Employees will also have to resist the temptation to look at work-related material on their computers or smartphones or any other kind of malevolent intrusion into the time they have been nationally mandated to spend on whatever the French call la dolce vita. Uh, Companies must ensure that their employees come under no pressure to do so. The good life. Thus the spirit of the law and of France as well as the letter shall be observed. Can you believe this, man? That I mean, they're so so effectively, they're, you hamstr- they're hamstringing their productivity is what they're doing. It's you ridiculous. can't require your employees to respond to work email after six o'clock. I think that's ridiculous. I think I want to get a job in France. <laughs> I don't. It it if you're if you uh, if you're trying to get ahead. If you're trying to get ahead, how do you get, how the fuck do you get ahead? How do you get I don't promoted? Know. I, I, if you're I don't not know. outworking somebody, that, that's I mean yes. If the whole if the whole marketplace is as a mandated level of the same com- productivity, hey, I don't think that's communism, man. <laughs> it's that's I communism. It's a little weird. Socialist fucks. It's a little weird. There's no doubt about it. I I mean I don't get me wrong. I'm sure they're gonna have nice evening time. That's that's weird. I am Jean Pierre, the tutu maker. I make the tutus only until six p.m. <laughs> and then I no longer make the tutus. I uh, I am bilingual. I speak uh, English and uh, the language of love. A wee wee. wee. <laughs> you 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 speak. You're in. People uh, often ask me, they say, uh, Jean-Pierre, I say, oui, mon ami. <laughs> they say, uh, Jean-Pierre, how do you like your women? I say, my women, mon ami. Oh, you know, like uh, my fries. <laughs> Hot and very franche. <laughs> 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 
What about salty, Pierre? I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's your best character thus far on the show. That's your Is best it? character by far. I feel. <laughs> I feel bad that I made him a tutu maker. I wonder if that just. That, I wonder if that's my bias toward the French. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you could have made him a. You could have made him a baguette salesman. I uh, do not uh, <laughs> like to bake. Uh, my. Uh, you know, I got into the tutu business because my family already had the uh, textile factory. Yes, what, what um, did you make before the tutus? We made the little, uh, little black and white uh, striped shirts uh, that became popular with the mind. <laughs> so you're, you're responsible for the Marcel Marceau? Let's just say it helps uh, trap them in the box. <laughs> so would you say that your family really knows their onions when it comes to fabric? Oh. <laughs> I got caught up in the fucking character and forgot about the game. <laughs> ah, fuck it. I give up. <laughs> it's what the French do best. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to old news. Puppet looks so alive. Well, that's more than I can say for you. <laughs> All right, this is um, is from NBCLosAngeles.com. First off, old news is not news from last week. It's not news from last month. Oh, good point. It is news. On the old, of which we all aspire to be someday. Hey, we love old people. So if you want to know where you're going to end up, what challenges lay ahead of you, you best study what's going on now. In fact, the matter is the things that plague old people are not the things that plague you and I. For instance. Yet. Yes, that's right. There's a look into the future, as it were. From NBCLosAngeles.com. Headline, grandmother died trying to escape morgue freezer. Oh, God. Colon, God, no way. Lawsuit. <laughs> so they thought the old lady died. She did die. They thought she died. I mean, you assume they thought she died. They put her in the morgue freezer, at which point she tried to escape and died during the escape. Now the family is suing. I've never seen a colon used like this in a headline. Maybe either. somebody jacked up with some bath salts post-mortem. <laughs> They brought in like the Pulp Fiction syringe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Granny. All right. Uh, an appeals court ruled the case oh. filed by the family of 80 year old Maria de Jesus Aurora. That's de probably DeJesus. Jesus. <laughs> Nobody fucks with DeJesus. <laughs> Maria de Jesus Aurora against a Southern California hospital can move forward. Uh, the family of a woman who may have frozen to death after being pronounced dead and placed in a morgue is moving forward with the lawsuit against a hospital that claims their family member struggled unsuccessfully to escape her frozen tomb. Maria de Jesus Aurora, an 80-year-old grandmother with more than 50 grandchildren. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's a busy fucking family right there. 50 grandkids. Dude, that's like, that's like having 10 kids. You think they're... they're that's having ten kids, and each one of those kids having five kids. Do you, are they counting great grandchildren? Got it. Have to be. Have to be. Like she has fifty grand. I mean, great children are great. You lump them all in as grandchildren. Hey, the grandkids are all coming over, and that's the you yeah. Know, it's got to be the greats and the grands and the. They're, I don't know. So isn't a problem we had a hundred years ago, though. Other guy, because you know old people died before the greats were <laughs> yeah, available. Yeah, yeah. Um. Maria de Jesus Aurora, an 80-year-old grandmother with more than 50 grandchildren, was pronounced dead in July 2010 from having too many grandchildren. No, she had she suffered a heart attack. This is this is old and old. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. This is <laughs> where did I find this? You I, found I this? It to you. Oh, the lawsuit's going on now. There you go. Oh, yeah, the family right, suing. That's why. That's why this is in the news currently. Um, so she was pronounced dead in July 2010 after suffering a heart attack. A few days later, she was found in a half-unzipped body bag, face down, with a broken nose and cuts and bruises to her face. Injuries family members said were not there at the time she was hospitalized. Well, I would fucking hope here, not. Here's, here, here, why? Grandma shows up with a broken nose and cuts to her face. They're going to ask some questions about the family, right? Why would you lock? Uh, why would a morgue door be locked? I don't think it was locked. I just think the freezer door was very, very heavy, 
and Maria de Jesus Aurora is no. very, very old and frail. Mm. And also near death <laughs> since, you know, they had locked her in the morgue freezer. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't well, spry. The, hey, the, the, this isn't, this isn't this the is a, bride in to, in, you know, kill Bill. Well, this is a quick fix. Okay. Uh, we just start, we just, every time we put somebody in a body bag, we just toss in a can of spinach with them. <laughs> <laughs> how about problem solved how about we just put a cell phone in there you know how expensive that's gonna be <laughs> you get one of the burners like in the wire man the drug dealers they, they break those things every fucking week will it, will it work at that cold of a temperature for that long oh that's a good fucking point I didn't think about the, the freezing issue spinach is the way to go it's only sure far away <laughs> It's it's the only way. But then we'll have a whole fucking country full of old people with gigantic forearms. Yeah. <laughs> then they can get jobs. They can get jobs in fucking, you know, massage parlors. I was just thinking how imposing all the Walmart gre- greeters would be. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Welcome to Walmart. No, 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 Grandpa. Step back. Uh, all right, so they found the unzipped body bag, the broken nose, the et cetera, et cetera. On Wednesday, a California appeals court ruled that the family's medical malpractice lawsuit alleging the woman's body was mishandled by the hospital can move forward. She was put into that body bag while she was alive, said family, family attorney Scott Schutzman. The cold from the hospital morgue woke her up, and she was fighting her way out when she died. The lawsuit against White Memorial Medical Center in Boyle Heights alleging wrongful death outlines the family's account of what happened after Aurora was found unconscious at her home in July 2010. She was transported to the hospital by ambulance and later declared dead. The lawsuit claims that she was prematurely declared dead at the hospital and that she was frozen alive at the morgue before mortuary workers who arrived to transport her found Aurora face down in a halfway unzipped body bag. Family members said they did not see lacerations and bruises on her face until viewing her remains at the funeral home. The mortuary workers informed plaintiffs of the injuries to the descendants' remains, um, which the mortuary was unable to mask, court documents state. So not only did they lock this chick up in a freezer before she was dead, but they made her ugly for her funeral, too, other guy. It's <laughs> fucked up. Uh, I'm going to blame the vampires. Vampires. <laughs> She was dead. It wasn't a heart attack she died from. <laughs> she died from lack of blood after she arose from her undead state? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that took three days. It's these new kind of vampires, man. Uh, know, th- this was 2010. That is in the height of the true blood craze. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hadn't gone over the shark yet. Um, would there be a more terrible end to your life? Than to wake up after a heart attack in a morgue freezer and be unable to free yourself? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Give me two. Two more terrible deaths than waking up in a freezer after a heart attack and being unable to uh, escape. Um, I would think jumping out of an airplane and pulling your chute and just clothes falling out. <laughs> so just straight up sidewalk splat. Yeah, that the was old sidewalk sad. splat, yeah, and yeah. the fact that you have like at least fifteen or twenty seconds to really contemplate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dying halfway through a blowjob <laughs> really <laughs> suck. <laughs> I finished before I finished. You know, it's terrible. Um. <laughs> Does that mean that when you're old and you're getting think, blowjobs, you're going to make your- I would think, I would think having your... a slit cut into your stomach and having a hungry rat put inside of it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, okay. No more no more worse ways to die than the freezer. <laughs> the first two were kind of humorous. That third one was horrible. <laughs> Stop it right there. Uh, I would also think being uh, being strapped down over, uh, over growing bamboo would probably suck. Do they- has, has, has anyone do has anyone done that? Yeah, man. Strap you down over growing bamboo. Bamboo grows right through you. Does it really? Yeah. Takes about two weeks. <laughs> Shitty way to die. I wow. Okay, yeah, that's worse than than dying in the freezer like grandma did. You gotta admit though, it's a pretty shitty way to die. No? Yeah. Okay. I think I don't think there's a good way to die. <laughs> Peacefully in your sleep after the blowjob. 
Um, let's go to a little breaking news here. This is from Jalopnik.com. That sounds trustworthy. Uh, it's a member of the Gawker Network, so it's very trustworthy. Uh, this is like one of my worst fears. Mazda issues recall because it finds more spiders in fuel tanks. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, first of all, let's talk about the fact that one time they found a bunch of spiders in fuel tanks. Enough that now this headline references more spiders in Why fuel tanks. Why is that tanks. an issue? Put in gas. Spiders <laughs> die. Issue solved. Mazda has a spider problem, and it has nothing to do with which Fiat brand will get a version of the new Miata. Uh, this concerns the previous generation Mazda 6 and the spiders that may still be living in its fuel tank in a repeat of one of the rare humorous recalls. How do you? How is that a recall? Uh, well, I don't know. They they recalled. Oh, are the spiders like clogging? Oh yes, they may. They'll weave a web in the evaporative canister vent line which could create excessive pressure in the fuel tank and could cause the tank to crack, mm. thereby releasing the fucking crazy-ass spiders that you had in your fuel tank also. This round that's, is for... That's fucking nuts, man. So 42,000 cars they had to recall from 2010 through 2012. Where, where, where are their factories at? Are they overseas? or are they fact- I mean, where's that gas tank being made? That's a very good question. And this article doesn't have it. I don't know. I bet those aren't American-made. Uh, as before, Mazda will install a spring to prohibit spider intrusion and reprogram the emission system to prevent pressure building up. Really? Wait a minute. Re- a spring? Wait a minute. So they don't get rid of the spiders. They they install something so that no spiders can get in, and I'm assuming so that the spiders that are in can't get out into the car or something. Dude, here's the thing. You know what a spring looks like? Yeah. You know what a spider looks like? <laughs> I mean, vaguely, yes. you telling me a spider can't get through a spring? <laughs> I don't know. Apparently so. <laughs> How do they know what size the fucking spider is going to be? I'm sure if it just had newly hatched babies, that fucking spring ain't going to do nothing. Well, or if there were enough spiders pushing all at the same time, couldn't they just push the spring down out of the way? Maybe spiders have spring allergies. <laughs> They're allergic to springs? Yeah, they just We're can't. not talking about running water like vampires here. We're talking about like a coiled bling, bling, bling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I don't, it messes with their inner ear. Like they start going through and it starts vibrating and they have to back up. I, I can't. I don't, want, I don't want any fucking part of my... I don't want anything I buy to have spiders in it. If I ever buy something and there's a recall because there were spiders in it... That's the thing. Hey, man, you got to watch out for the deadly banana spider, man. No, I just took care of that. I don't buy bananas. Skip right over that problem. No problem for me. No banana spider. You want to talk high? Or real low. (laughs) Say the headline. What's the sound we're going to have for this bit? I don't know. We'll think of something. (laughs) Maybe just somebody coughing. (laughs) Oh, hey, yeah, that's a good idea. (laughs) <laughs> Got a cough to get off. Uh, this is from the Huffington Post headline: Amanda Bynes' mom says smoking weed caused actress's behavior. What? Yeah. It didn't. It didn't. Ha, didn't she have the mental issues? And, and was smoking weed to self-medicate. To yes, even that, out. That was my understanding, too. Amanda Bynes' mom is speaking out of, about her daughter now uh, that she is out of treatment and starting anew. Lynn Bynes told E! News Wednesday that the smoking... Uh, she told E! News Wednesday that smoking weed caused her daughter's peculiar behavior. Amanda is very sorry for all the hurtful tweets, statements, and actions that occurred while she was under the influence of marijuana, she said. Let me just say this. No one has done anything hurtful. Other than that dude jumping off the balcony, and that was hurtful to himself. No, nobody has done anything hurtful due to the influence of marijuana. People have done things hungerful. I don't think I've hung. I don't. I don't think I have enough of a sample size of hanging out with enough people while they're high. Maybe, maybe. Have you? But have you ever heard anybody describe Joe? Their friend and say, "Yeah, Joe's a good guy, but he's a mean stoner." <laughs> no, no, no. 
you know fucking 10 or 15 people that they'll say, yeah, Joe's a good dude, but he's a mean drunk, right? You know five guys that you can't go drinking with because they will end up getting you into a fight and locked up, right? Well, right, but but we're not we're not comparing apples to oranges here, man. So it doesn't. You're saying nobody's saying she's punching people. She's just acting erratic and crazy. Right. Okay. All right. Previously, Tamar Armanak, Amanda Bynes' lawyer, spoke with People Magazine to quash some rumors that have been floating around about the former Nickelodeon star. He stated the 28-year-old does not have schizophrenia uh, and does not have an issue with drugs. Amanda currently is on zero medication. Armanac said she's devoted to living her life as healthy as possible. She's never had a history of abusing alcohol or hard drugs, and she's proud to say she's been marijuana-free for the past nine months. In March, Lynn Bynes told people that her... Well, no, wait a minute. If she's been marijuana-free for the past nine months, she's been doing crazy shit in the past nine months. She's been better lately, but that ain't nine months long, no, right? Co- then why isn't she saying something? Oh, yeah, that's a good point, too. In March, Lynn Bynes told people that her daughter was doing very well. Let Amanda Bynes speak besides her (laughs) mother and lawyer. No, we can't can't do that. (laughs) That Uh, bitch still cray. She She ain't high anymore, but that bitch still cray. She's a little cray cray. (laughs) I'll write up a statement make it sound real nice. Uh, Lynn said that she has enrolled in classes at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in Los Angeles. The Easy A star entered treatment last year after a series of odd incidents. She moved to a rehab facility in Malibu and then moved in with her parents upon completion in December. The family recently headed to Cabo San Lucas. For a minute I read that as they headed to Colorado. I was like, right into the lion's <laughs> den. No, they headed to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico to celebrate Amanda's birthday. She shared photos from the trip on her Because Twitter there's account. no weed coming out of Mexico. No, there's never been any weed in Mexico I don't know man I don't know I look look whether this is fair or not I relate every stoner to uh, Matthew McConaughey from Days and Confused that's what I'm saying like will it make you be salacious to high school women probably maybe I don't know maybe if you're that kind of guy will it make you eat more junk food than you should probably Absolutely. I just think there's worse things out there for us to demonize and for the government to spend money on and uh, other crimes to be incarcerated for than marijuana, man. Oh, I agree. I, you know, it was. It, I lived in New Orleans for a while. And, you know, down there, it was like all this, like people would be speeding, people would be driving crazy, and the cops right there they just ignore it and move on by and and you're like why aren't they doing anything and the fact of the matter is cops had better things to do than minor traffic violations or bust a dude for a dime bag or smoking a joint on the corner or whatever it is and and i'm very much of a mind that hey let's go after the people that are still in millions of dollars from each other let's go after the child molesters and the killers and the thieves and leave the pothead alone here's what i find crazy I think this is a scapegoat. I think I think they're looking to bring don't, Amanda you, back. When was the last time you read an article about somebody uh, with THC in their system uh, ripping the heart out of, out of one of their sparring partners or eating the face off of a cop or, <laughs> or any yeah, of that's, that? You don't because that's bath salts. And I can go to the fucking convenience store and buy a bag of bath salts right the fuck now. Well, but they, they're trying, uh, in their defense, in, in the in the people's defense, they're trying to get that shit out of the the convenience store. Problem is they just change the ingredients and sell another batch of it. That's, that's, that's a hard fucking bug to quash. It'd be an easy bug to quash, though, if at the convenience store you could instead buy weed. <laughs> well, why not? I don't... <laughs> like, that's my thing. If the, if the choice was, hey, here's this mysterious product that may or may not get you stoned and may or may not make you eat your friend's Look, face. there's got to be a core ingredient. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not a fucking scientist <coughs> yeah. or a chemist, or, uh, but there's got to be a core ingredient in bath salts that's what's fucking you up. Right. No, I, I I think that's the problem. There is no like it's scatter shot. I think it's a bunch of different companies all chasing a thing, which is, hey, what shit can we put together that's not technically illegal right now, that will potentially maybe get somebody stoned. Although the fact that we're selling it not for consumption means we don't have to actually prove that we're going to get anybody stoned with. I, the, but I'm saying again, that market, the market for those. 
for bath salts, for for any of that like alternative high, all those herbal shit that you see in in the, the bodegas, all that shit goes away if there's a weed shop next door. That's all I'm saying. Hey, sounds like Brian Cranston should have gotten a bath salt game and up out that meth game <laughs> and shit would have went a lot better. You should go by twoguysonepod.com. Make sure you check out all of our links there. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. You can get every episode uh, each week now on YouTube. And let us know what you think of all of that. Two guys, one pod at me.com. Is it worth it? Do you like to listen to that stuff on YouTube? Let us know. Subscribe in iTunes if you do that. Write us a review. That's a great way for other people to find the show. And um, also, make sure you call us. Call us up and wish us a happy birthday. We've got a phone number, and our 100th episode is coming up in just a few weeks. We want you to be part of it. The phone number is 504-613-5635. That's 504-613-5635. Call and wish us a happy birthday, a fuck you, whatever it might be. Then you'll end up on the show for our 100th uh, episode. That is the perfect segue into man scouting. Excellent. Because people who turn this shit off halfway through that promo are going to miss out. <laughs> All right. Vouchers. We ain't got no vouchers. We don't need no vouchers. I don't have to show you any stinking vouchers. You want to explain Man Scout badges? Uh, Man yeah. Scouting? So the Man Scouting is like a Boy Scout badge, except it's a little groans up. It's groans up and it's groans up and it's groans up. Um, uh, just like man scouting badges, you have to perform some sort of uh, function, service, uh, learn a lesson, if you will, uh, complete an objective to gain the badge. And the more badges you have, the more manly you are. That's the man scouting badge. In a nutshell, mm-hmm. this week's man scout badge is astrology. <laughs> now, wait a minute. When you texted me, you just wrote the word, and I didn't get catch the emphasis on the syllable there, but astrology, huh? Astrology. All right. Uh, of course, astrology would be uh, the study of uh, – that's not – astronomy is the real thing. Astrology is like Virgo, Pisces, that's reading your horoscope, right? Sure. Is there an actual astrology badge? Yes. There is now. There we go. All right. What's, what's the man scouting astrology badge? It is – when you have collected and have slept with a person for each of the 12 astro- astrological signs. Ast- astrological, astrological signs. Astrological signs. Uh, there are 12 astrological signs, are there? I think this could be a segment all all to itself. Like every <laughs> every, every every week, every week we give your this astrological, week's astrological sign. sign is the Virgo. Yeah, Virgo is it, and then you and it's a little verb with your astrological. Yeah, that's fucking funny, man. All right, but you maybe gotta, we don't. Maybe we don't call it Virgo. Maybe we call it something else. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What, so, do you have? Do you know the? What are the astrological signs? I don't have a clue. You're just saying there's twelve different types. Yeah. We're gonna have to break these down. Eventually, it'll give us it'll give us some good content for the rest of the uh, thing. And now the listeners are gonna have to stay tuned to figure out what astrological sign they are. <laughs> Do you think you bagged all twelve? Do you have this badge? God, I hope not. I don't know that I've gotten. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming on a list of twelve, some of them are terrible, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. No, I, I bet I don't have this one. I don't. I don't think I've had twelve different kinds of astrological, astrologically aligned women. My goodness, sir, you've opened Pandora's box, <laughs> as it were. I thought it was a good idea. That was a great idea. That was a great idea. All right, let's 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 put a plug in this puppy, as it were, like a twenty-two slug, <laughs> the whole yeller. No. Oh. He had rabies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Here's your word from Bob Ross to zen out on. You can get more, by the way, at uh, bobrossquotes.com. Just lightly blend it, one hair and some air. Oh, that's. Uh, <laughs> what, one, what the fuck? One fu- hair and some air. You know, on a brush, just one hair and some air. That's lightly blending it. You know, the, the brush is made up of hairs. 
horse hairs or what? Oh, I thought he was using a hair like a unit of measure. Oh, no. no. Like just a scotch, a smidgen, a hair? <laughs> no, 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 no. He meant like a hair. One hair and some air. No, I, th- I think you're wrong. I think he's using it as a unit of measure. I don't think so. You're going to blend just a hair of blue, and then you're going to let it cool. You're going to let it breathe. Blend it with what? Blend just a hair of white. How are you? But how are you blending them? With a brush. Well, that ha- that is made of what? Or your finger? Hair? Or your finger? Incorrect, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm saying he's using it as a unit of measure. You're saying he's using it as an actual. There are brushes that do have one fucking hair on it. For by such the way. a for such a happy turn of phrase, by the way, uh, it, it's really set the two of us again one another, hasn't it? Yeah, Bob, you've ruined it. Fucking Robert, <laughs> you fucked it up Robert, once again. Robert, that asshole. <laughs> Which astrological sign is he? <laughs> the, the the furry one. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you just categorize you just categorize people that are just just assholes. So like people who troll on the internet. Oh, the troll they're, is an astrological they're sign. They're an astrological sign. Okay. Well, no, but the, but we, we you won't have banged all of those. You won't have banged talker. all the assholes. <laughs> the quiet talker. <laughs> Tell us what you think the uh, astrological signs should be. Two guys, one pod at me dot com. That's the email address. Uh, the outro music again this week is from Corona. Uh, Future is the name of the song. Uh, from Winnipeg, Canada. I find Thanks. that this band uh, is pretty solid, but it's so much better with a hint of line. <laughs> I don't want to get a fucking email that they're named after Corona, like the ring that's around a fucking moon. I don't. Or this, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> it's spelled a whole different way. I may be saying it incorrectly. <laughs> well, but I mean they're Canadian, so I don't think they're speaking a different language. Hey, maybe they'll email us and tell us it's all a boot. <laughs> Uh, until next week, that, my friends, is the show. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do the prep with me. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do the snake with me. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do the walk with me. Go ahead.
Yeah. That would be a dog I'd have to put down. Like if a dog got fucking rapies where it just goes around fucking raping everything in sight. Every dog I've That's ever- That's way worse than rabies. Every dog I've ever known has rapies. They all fucking hump your leg if you give them a half a chance. No, yeah. Nobody's asked me. I've never had a dog ask me, would you like a little humping now? Hmm? Yes? Man, they my, just fucking get up on it. My fucking dog's got rapies. <laughs> I got to put it down. Oh, I'll just give it, give it a few minutes. Just throw this, just throw this teddy bear in its pen. It'll be fine. 